it's time for more at an integer. I'm your Gibbs, and we've been making a whole bunch of cake for good old Lulu here. Now, where are we? I f uh, we still have a glow stick, we still have this uh, cricket ball, and we have two keys. Not a whole lot of inventory for this particular an integer game. I seem to recall, well, at least in recent memory, a I'm lot of them Lulu. having a lot more inventory than this point. You're such a very, very clever and beautiful bird. I'll bet the word hour means something to you. Cake first! Lulu hungry! Cake first! Cake first! Yeah, right. yeah, I know the drill. You're gonna need a bigger bolt. Alright, so, Lulu. you know what? I think that's enough with Lulu and his cake. Or her cake. So I did see a comment that I don't actually need Lulu to tell me. I can actually just guess. So we're going to go ahead and take care of that. Uh, and once again we have to go do this dragon piece. So I think this one was our, right? So I'm going to say it's glass. Oh dragon, sounds like you're burping every time I do that. Alright, let's go. This glow stick is lasting a long time and I am perfectly fine with that. Right glow stick? You just keep on lasting here. Okay, our... We'll do... See, there's a G there. L. Yeah, I think we're good here. Hourglass. Ant. Uh... Let's try this one. Ant Hill. Whoa, we're ready to uh, move into this, are we? Sound of the door unlocking. Okay. Uh oh. <sighs> Looks like it's time for another glow stick. <laughs> no, I just finished saying that I didn't. Oh no. Alright, fine. Nancy's got to go get another glow stick off of Jane. I just said that the glow stick was lasting. Oh, game. Trolling me here, big time. I mean, I was quite impressed with how long it did last, but seriously, now I gotta go talk to Jane after all of that. Hey, who's crying? Hi. Linda, I found the secret passageway. Jane told me where it is. But I didn't see any curse in there. How could you have missed it? It was right there, just waiting to be found. Wanting to be found. I can't believe how foolish I was. That stupid gargoyle. I hated how its evil eyes would stare at me whenever I walked to my room. So I moved it around, changed its position, kept fiddling with it. But when that secret door suddenly opened, I couldn't resist going in there. Which gargoyle is this? What do you mean, which gargoyle? I thought you said you found the secret passageway. So there's more than one. Linda, I think someone's trying to scare you off. I think they thought you were getting too close to something that's hidden in this house. You're right. I did get too close to something. That witch, that witch that was burned at the stake. She's cursed me and she's probably cursed you too. No, 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 no. I'll see you soon. Please. Nancy can't be cursed. She's in like a lot more video games after this one. <laughs> okay, let's go and uh, talk to Jane. We're gonna have to play a game for a glow stick. I'm trying to remember. I think it was the match 3 one, wasn't it? Jane, I need a glow stick. Mm -hmm. Hi, Nancy. Could I get another glow stick? Yes, but you know the rule. First, we have to play another game. You and your On your mark, games. get set, go! Easy. Okay, so we gotta move these around here. Uh, for those of you that recall this particular game, it's truly really trying to get four or five at a time. Just to kind of maximize your points here. Uh, let's see. I don't know if there's really a great strategy for this. Frankly, I don't know if there is. Okay, so here's a good one. This will get me four here. That's good. And we'll put that down there. We're just gonna keep going for more and more. We gotta get 2,500, so... Uh, that's a jumpy dude. Uh, 
That's a lizardy dude. Okay, here's a good one. Four. I think I've got four of these people too. I'll keep trying to get fours here. Alright. I think if you also get threes, it extends time too, so. Uh. Okay, game. Come on, come on now. We're getting really close here. Okay, that's a four way. That's gonna help out. Now. Uh, we've got 2400. Oh my gosh, we just need one more match. But we have a minute, so we have time. And uh, I'm blanking on my next match here. Of course I am. That would just figure. Okay, here we go. We can do these duckies. There we go. Ooh, look at that. High score! Hooray! You've won! And here's your reward. Yes! Thank you. I should get going. Come back soon. Bye. Glow stick time. Oh, did you see that gargoyle's eyes just shifted? I swear they just shifted. Okay. <laughs> Could be seeing things. Anybody in here? Guess she's not in her room. Oh, the pretty bird in the mirror. You're a pretty oh, birdie. Pretty... You're a pretty birdie. All right, dragon. I'm not sure how many times I've had to play with your hand, but it has been a lot. <laughs> so now we have the glow stick. Now we're ready to rock and roll down here in the secret super duper secret super duper place. And I really need to use my cell phone. I know I haven't even called Ned in forever. We'll have to see who else is on my uh, phone list. All right, now we're in the sneaky. Sneaky? It's super dark in here. It looks like the rest of this grid is on the other side of the wall. Okay. What are we trying to do here? Uh, hmm. Let's see. So, am I trying to get them upright? I think so. Okay, so that one's like that. Does that not do anything for me? I don't know. I'm not sure what to do with those. Well, something else is going on down here, isn't it? Let's, let's make a cell phone call. We'll call this person here. Sure. Palak. Palakai. This is Paliki. Hi, my name is Nancy Drew. Could I ask you some questions about lycanthropy? I'm sorry, I'm about to leave for a seminar and I'm very busy. Besides, I've written two books and 12 articles on the subject. If you have questions, perhaps you should try reading one of them? I did. That's how I got your number. Well, if you didn't understand something, I'm afraid I really don't have time to explain it to you. I understood everything. It's just that I know someone who seems to be exhibiting some of the symptoms of lycanthropic meta... Lycanthropic metamorphosis? Well, that's different. Talk to me. Okay. What do you consider to be the definitive signs that someone is turning into some kind of animal? Symptoms are relatively subtle. A dry mouth, a fatigue, impaired vision, and reduced blood flow to the skin. Is this person pale? Mm, yes. Well, actually, we have no idea. I can't say. She won't let anyone see her. She just lies in bed all day behind this curtain. Hmm. And at night, what does she do at night? I can't be sure, but I do know that I saw something outside the night I arrived. Some kind of animal. And when I asked to see my friend, I was told she was unavailable. This sounds very promising. You don't really believe she's turning into some kind of creature, do you? Young lady, I believe the human mind is capable of far more than we can ever imagine. Pale skin, dry mouth, fatigue. 
the human mind is perfectly capable of causing the body to exhibit such symptoms, if it is so motivated. Okay. Are temper tantrums symptomatic of lycanthropy? There are no hard and fast rules when it comes to lycanthropy, or almost anything else for that matter. You're not but helpful. if someone believes that what they're changing into is irrational, or has a bad temper, then they will exhibit irrational, ill-tempered behavior. Especially if this is contrary to their mm. former nature. Interesting. What would motivate someone to turn into an animal? Most lycanthropes are under a great deal of stress. Due perhaps to the death of a loved one, marriage, divorce, a relocation, that sort of thing. They're emotionally vulnerable, which means they're particularly open to the power of suggestion. Someone suggests they become a lycanthrope? Not in so many words, of course. Okay. Somehow, they get it in their head that they're destined to take another form. They see something, they read something, someone says something to them. Somehow, they come to believe they're supposed to undergo a physical metamorphosis. And so, in their weakened psychological state, they do. Wow, so this is kind of like that whole idea of perception becomes reality. That's kind of interesting. Do you think seeing an ancient curse would be enough to send someone, you know, over the lycanthropic edge? Absolutely. Of course, a person cannot morph into XYZ if that person has no idea what XYZ is. She has to have some prior knowledge of the creature she thinks she has been condemned to become. A book, a website, a movie, a play, a casual anecdote, any number of things could provide her subconscious brain with clues as to how she is to look, feel, and behave in her altered form. Okay. I think that's it. Then. Thanks for your time. Good day. Bye. Alright, let's get out of here. It's kind of dark down here. We want to go back up towards light and maybe we'll give our, uh, our BF a call. Still have no idea where that slide was. I remember that slide we had to hit that target with the cricket ball. Anyway, so we're, we're out of here. Let's go out. Was it here? Yes, this is where it is. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm switching. Wait, do I have it in my hand? Yes, I do. Okay, let's try it. We're going, we're going. Oh my gosh, we did it! Yay! Ooh, what have we found? Excellent! We found a disky thing. <laughs> Neato mosquito. Alright, who do we want to see? We want to see if Nigel's still hanging out in here. And we ought to figure out where that clock goes. No, he's still here. Hello, Nancy. What do you think of Ethel Bosney? I think she's an odd lot, that one. She has no formal background in pedagogy or scholarship. I would be a much better influence on Jane were I her tutor, but Mrs. Drake insists on employing Ethel. Okay. I'll let you get back to your work. Farewell. Hmm. So, what can we do out here then? Oh. Someone's ringing the church bells or something. There's a gargoyle over here. Hmm. Hey, wait, there's a crest missing here. Where's this crest? Shouldn't everybody have a crest? Maybe. No crest for you. Um, hmm. What else could we do here? Anything over here? More crests. We'll just look at them all, I guess. I don't know. Sure. Oh yeah, that was the symbol that was on the door. That's the direction that told me how the dragon hands are supposed to go. What about here? That's kind of plain. 
Lulu! And then there's what's over here. That was the password for the computer. And that's the latest dude. Hmm. So where would I put this clocky thing? I guess we should go... You know what? Let's call the BF here. It's been a little while. Nitty boy? Hello? Hi, Ned. Hey, what's the latest? Linda told me that her problem started right after she found this curse in a secret passageway. So what'd the curse say? She refused to tell me. Sounds to me like you'd better give finding that out your top priority. Okay. Apparently, each of Jane's ancestors had different coats of arms. Really? That's odd. You'd think there would be just one coat of arms for the whole family. Believe me, the Pendleton family is nothing if not odd. Each coat of arms includes very distinct images and symbols. I wonder why they're so different. It's a long story, but I'm beginning to think that each Pendleton left behind a puzzle, and that his or her coat of arms contains clues to solving that puzzle. Makes sense. I mean, in an oddball, Penvalinian sort of way. I think Linda may be turning into the Beast of Blackmore. Excuse me? See, I found this book that had information on lycanthropy in it. Lycanthropy? Werewolves? Basically, yes. Anyway, I called this expert, and from what she said, I really think Linda thinks she's been cursed to become the legendary Beast of Blackmore. So it's all in her head. Right. Linda's symptoms are probably all psychosomatic. Probably. I mean, her symptoms are all psychosomatic. Uh, hopefully. <laughs> so what does this beast of Blackmore do? I don't know that. And I'm kind of hoping I don't find out. That makes two of us. Aw, Ned. I'll talk to you soon. I'm already looking forward to it. Oh, wow. He's leaning on thick, isn't he? Alright, so why is there no crest here? See, I can click on him, but I can't... Wait a minute, I can click on neither of those, and here I can click on... Oh look, see, he's a gargoyle there too. But I don't know what his crest is. I don't know if Nigel will tell me. Hello, Nancy. I'll let you get back to your work. No, Goodbye. I'm interested. Uh, don't know what else I can do here. I guess what we'll do is we'll just head back out and... Uh, what time is it anyways? We should see what time it is. We'll have to go to Nancy's room for that. I do need to figure out a home for this new thing. Where would that go? I don't think it's in here. This actually popped up when we were doing that ghost chase. So there's this over here though. Hello? Hello? I don't think this will go here, no. I'm a glow stick. No. Alright, fine. We'll have to come back to that drain. Doesn't work. Probably because the well's empty. So we're gonna have to figure out how to get this well going, too. I guarantee that's gonna be a puzzle of sorts. Try to see if that Mrs. Drake yes. is over here. Goodbye. Good day. So we have to figure out how to, we have to feed. Oh, you know what? Let's go do this. Let's go. I think we ordered some turkey, uh, pink and turkey or something like that, and we can feed the uh, coniferous plant there. I'm kind of running out of time, but let's go back to Nancy's room, and then uh, we'll grab some food. Nancy's hungry. No, not there, Nancy. I always go one too soon. Hello? Yeah. Oh, why have I not got any food here? I can use my Johnny Rudder to grease up that lock outside Jane's room. Okay, but why? I wanted the new food. Maybe it wouldn't let me because I didn't grab the butter? Alright, let's just put in an order. Hello? 
Noodles Head, this is Tommy. Hi, this is Nancy Drew. I'd like to order some food. Sure, we've got some loop-de-loop -loop bangers and mash, pinky and perky and a dog's eye, and they're all Robin Hood. I'd Loops. like some pinky, pinky and perky, perky, please. Good choice. Uncle Fred and Johnny Rudder? No, thank you. No, thank you. All right, then. We'll come round and leave it at your Rory. Baked potato. Bye. Hugh Penvalin. Hello, Mr. Penvalin. It's Nancy Drew again. Yes, good to hear from you. I am a bit pressed for time, however. What do you know about the secret passageways here at Blackmore? Only that they're hundreds of years old and are undoubtedly dangerously decayed. Jane has been ordered to stay out of them. Fortunately, it's highly doubtful she'll even figure out how to get in them. You have underestimated you. How many passageways are there? One or two, I suppose. I'm really not sure. Oh, I'm pretty sure I you vaguely do now. recall blundering into one when I was a child, but it was very dark and ended rather abruptly, and I found the whole experience to be rather unremarkable. When I told my father what I'd discovered, he merely shrugged, agreed that the passageways were dark, decrepit, and pointless, suggested that I stay out of them, and that was the end of it. Are you the one who hired Ethel to be Jane's tutor? No, that was my aunt's doing. Mrs. Drake? Yes, she absolutely insisted. She said the Bossonies had been tutoring the Penvalins for centuries and that I was duty-bound to continue the tradition. She kept saying that it's what her brother would have wanted. Her brother being Alan, your father? Yes, and I must say I've been quite pleased with Ethel. She's a fine young woman and Jane seems to enjoy her lessons, strange as they are. What do you mean by strange? Ethel demands that Jane study history, obscure history... Penvalin history. They discuss events that even I, as a direct descendant, find inconsequential, to say nothing of deadly dull. What do you know about the Beast of Blackmore? Pure medieval fiction, the product of little minds in an era of dangerously little education. I have forbidden Ethel to so much as mention it to Jane. Where did you hear about it? The man doing research in the library? Nigel Mukherjee? Another of my aunt's ideas. The fact that the Penvalins have never had a book written about them has been a perpetual source of social embarrassment for her. How long has he had access to the library? For months now. Not that he's much of a bother. He's quiet as a church mouse and he never seems to set foot out of the library. He was recommended by a friend, and he has assured us over and over that the book he publishes will cast only a positive light upon the Penvalin name. Although, come to think of it, I never have seen the contract he agreed to sign, which was to put that promise in writing. Mm-hmm. It was nice talking to you. Do keep me posted. And it was nice talking to all of you. We'll be back for more Nancy Drew very soon. Bye for now.